Welcome to today's episode of the On Track Whiteboard series. I'm David Abood. Uh, today we're going to talk about six basic design rules for any PCB design. So, first let's talk a little bit about what design rules actually are and why we kind of need them in our designs. The f first thing that uh, design rules kind of help us deal with are looking at requirement interactions. All of our designs have a logical and physical side that need to be properly managed in order to create the perfect design. <clears throat> so what do design rules do? They allow you to define a system to you know, actually automate the, the checking of these requirements and um, giving you an interface between the logical and physical side uh, so that you can actually produce a board. So when you actually have these rules um, to define these requirements, you're actually able to automate um, DFM checks and actually make sure that you have a board that can be manufactured. With that, you have instantly validation and proof that you are meeting these requirements with these rules and you, can, you have proof um, moving forward. You can create reports and certain information like that. So let's look at some of the ways um, design rules are brought into a system. So you can get rules over from the PCB side, from the schematic side, and over from manufacturing. So what's important is to try and get this area right here, get everything filled in, and actually create rules that will help you cover all of these areas. So what we're gonna talk about are six of the rules that I think if you incorporate this into all of your designs, you're off to a pretty good start and you'll be able to actually get something manufactured. So let's start with the Polygon Connect style. So these rules, um, they're a little bit, uh, they're often overlooked by a lot of people. So the Polygon Connect style, what that will do is it helps you define how you connect from a via or pad over to the polygon itself. That makes, uh, that ensures that you can have per proper thermal connection, proper current um, connection to, to the copper, right? And these polygons. If you don't have that information, it's quite possible that you miss a pad and you don't connect it properly to a polygon and have certain stuff like that happen to you. The same type of thing is true with the solder mask expansion. If you don't properly define the solder mask expansion across the pads uh, at, that you have, it's quite possible that you would over define it or under define this information. Um, if, if you have not defined it across uniformly across a component, it's also possible to get tombstoning because one side will cool faster than the other and you'll get that, that effect, right? So, Creating a rule for your solder mask expansion makes sure that everything is uniform and you'll get everything done right the first time. With that, actually the, the, the style of your routing vias, right? As you're running routes, it's important to make sure that you are using the right type of vias. If you're using um, a via where the, the diameter to hole ratio is off, it's possible that it can't you know, work with the current that you are trying to drive through it. Um, you could get fused vias and, and have different problems. So it's really important to associate different, the different via styles for the different routes that you have throughout your design. So let's go over to the last three rules. So these are rules that most people generally think about. So um, I'll, we'll, I'll just go over them very quickly you have the component clearance rule. What does that do for you? So let's say you have a component, you've fully defined it with a 3D model, you have a 3D body for it. What the component's clearance will be able to tell you is vertical clearance from an enclosure. It will tell you clearance from other components. Um, if you don't have a 3D body and it's just a you know 2D footprint or courtyard, you'll be able to um, get distance based on the, the uh, primitives on the copper layer and the silk screen layer. So 
with that, the next step is looking at the actual traces and pad clearance. It's the same type of information. Um, it's just on, on a smaller level. If you don't have the appropriate clearance, you could have um, different types of issues here that you really don't want to be having on any design. And lastly, of course, the width of your routes is very important to ensure that everything is as it needs to be. Are your power routes the sufficient size to carry the current that you need? Um, if, if you don't have this information, it could be very detrimental. Um, one of the nice advancements we have in, in the ECAD environment is that you can actually have characteristic uh, impedance controlled routing. Um, you, could, you could have different impedance profiles to apply to these routing widths and make sure that everything is created in a manner that will be beneficial to you. So those are the six basic rules I recommend for any design. Uh, if you like this video, please like, like it, um, subscribe to our channel to get the latest up-to-date information sent to you automatically. Uh, if you have any comments or would like to make any suggestions, leave a comment down below. And thank you for joining us.